Hello and welcome to tutorial 125. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at how we know what the fill positions were for a strategy or a theoretical position on a chart and what I've done is created a dummy buy six contracts uh, on the e-mini chart then I've got three sales at various levels and they're all generated using market orders and as you can see the first one exit at uh, 266.25 the next one at 2666 the final one exits at 2668.75 that's fine we can see those values there but how do we find out those values within a strategy well I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing that and uh, this program incidentally will be available for free download by Gold Pass members and uh, if you want to save yourself some typing then you can also download it at the tutorial page at markplex.com that's m-a-r-k-p-l-e-x Dot com markplex.com okay so let's look at the program the first thing to notice is that I've used a strategy host now the way that you go about doing that is if you click on the toolbox and you uh, scroll down a little bit and you come down to the host and you double click on the strategy host I've just created another one here but so uh, we'll just demonstrate using that and then to create the event that we want. Well, first of all, I would set the connect to be true. And then to create the event that we want, we want an order fill event, is to simply go to this place on the, the box next to order fill and double click that. And then you get some new code generated here. And you'll be seeing the equivalent of that as we go through the tutorial. But what I'm gonna do is just delete this because we don't need an additional strategy host and I'm just gonna remove that okay so the strategy host that we do have you can see here that we've got this order fill event but uh, before we look at that let's just go ahead and just explain the the way that we've created these dummy trades and uh, we've done that here essentially I've just picked a date and a time just to, to suit what I needed to demonstrate here and you can see here are the uh, the, the buy and then the sales two of them are at specific times the third one is at a specific time over a certain uh, price and then one of the ways that we could uh, oh and incidentally just go to the chart for a moment the settings that I've got here for this strategy if we just click on format strategies click on the strategy properties properties for all I'm using use look inside bar back testing I've got that set to a minute and as far as the formats concerned if we click on the calculation tab, I've got that enable intrabar order generation calculation. So you need to have those settings. And let's just go back to the program. So we create the, the trades. And then uh, in this section here, we have something that says if the number of contracts has changed. So how do we know that? Well, I've set up a couple of variables. One of them is current contracts. The other one is contracts last tick. Now, current contracts that is equal to current contracts as you might imagine which is uh, a trade station reserved word you can click on that right click on that to see exactly what that does so it basically returns a value for the uh, the number of contracts that a uh, a strategy is long or short what i've also done is created something called contracts last tick or cts last tick and i've just set that equal to current contracts or current cts now both these variables if we just go to the top of the program are set up as intrabar persist variables so essentially what cts last tick does is it sets itself to current contracts but then the current contracts is updated so essentially uh, on a chart such as this where we've got tick by tick by tick or uh, it, we've actually got minute resolution but it will set what the value of the current contracts was last tick and that's how we know that we've uh, we've made a trade is one of the ways we know that so I've said if the number of contracts changes then we can uh, print out some information and the things that I've that I'm printing out are date time contracts sold which is uh, CTS last tick minus current contracts exit price and uh, what that is I've just put in the close the C B 
because that is the value where the uh, the sale took place and we can check that in a moment then I've also used this thing exit price now what you'll find is that that will be actually zero until we've completely exited the uh, the trade what I've also done for a specific bar is just printed out the, uh, the the value of current contracts is not equal to contracts last trade in other words that will evaluate as true when we actually have made a trade and the value of C so I'll be able to look at the, this a little bit more closely so let's go to the program and just see the result of that. You'll see that for the first trade, which happens at 10 o'clock, the, uh, the number of contracts sold is 3. The exit price is 266.25. Let's just verify that. 266.25. And as I just mentioned, exit price is uh, 0 because that only gets populated when the trade is completely closed. Now the next trade is at two o'clock and it's actually at 2666 and you'll see here again the, uh, the 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 program is correctly reflecting that selling one contract at that certain price and exit price is equal to zero now the, the last one is a little bit more interesting because this is the uh, the bar for which i'm printing the information but we'll see that in reality this um, imaginary strategy trade exits at 2668.75 and uh, let's just see what we get here well uh, for this particular bar i'm printing out all the ticks and uh, if you remember just going back to the program we're looking for the first tick over 2668.5 so let's just uh, go through 266 so that is the first tick over that value so then the next tick we get into the trade what uh, the information is telling us is the date the time the number of contracts sold and the exit price 2668.75 which is correct and also because we've now completely exited the position exit price uh, the exit price syntax will actually return a value which does in this case agree with the exit price so that is one way of finding this information the other way uh, that I've already alluded to is using the strategy host and this perhaps is uh, slightly simpler and uh, essentially what we do having created the strategy host using the toolbox we then click on the events and we look for the order fill event and then we're getting a couple of bits of information here the first one we want to know is the order direction and we get that using args.orderDirection so if we just put in args just so you can see how this works and then period you'll see that there is something called order direction now that order direction can be of several values it can be buy, buy to cover, sell, sell short and uh, we need to append in front of that strategy direction so if that equals strategy direction dot buy then what I'm doing is setting a string to be equal to buy and uh, if it's equal to strategy direction dot buy to cover then I'm setting it buy space to space cover and so on so that's the first thing we want to do now there's lots of other things available within the args and uh, if you click the period again you can see that one of those is average price and that is what we're going to use to show the price and a third thing in fact uh, more than three but uh, the quantity is uh, args dot quantity and what this does this uh, method is fired every time uh, an order is filled and uh, at the same time it, in, in our program it will go ahead and print this information so let's just verify that again and uh, if we just go back to the uh, the program and uh, you'll see that the the syntax as well as the one that I just showed you we have uh, information from the strategy host you'll see that to start with it's telling us that we're buying six contracts at at uh, 2665 and then uh, in each case it will tell us how many we sell and what the price is and I think in, in many ways that's a, a simpler approach to doing this so let's just uh, have another look at the program 
we need to load the strat namespace in order to use the um, strategy, uh, strategy order direction syntax. Oh yeah, one, one final thing was, as we get to the final sale, the entry price, in other words, the uh, syntax here, becomes zero because we're not in an end, we're not in a, a trade at the moment. So what I've done is recorded the entry price, the previous tick, and that's what we're using as we print out information so that we don't get a, a, a sudden uh, value of zero. In fact, I can see in this uh, most current iteration of this program that I've been developing, we're, uh, we're not actually even using that information. But if we did need the entry price, the previous tick, this would be the way that we could do that. Incidentally, if you wanted to uh, know more about the strategy host, if you go in view dictionary, then find that under strategy, strategy host, and then you can see uh, various pieces of information that we can utilize, including order fill. We can see some further information about the syntax that we need to know for order fill. And uh, so on. So there's the, uh, the information that we're getting from ARGs, notably the, the price, the quantity, we also got the we also got the order direction. Anyway, uh, I hope you might find this useful. Uh, please, uh, if I've made an error or need to explain something, please uh, please feel free to email me. Thank you very much.